Close meeting to order. We're going to uh, take a moment of reflection as we've been doing for the last several months. Uh, you're welcome to join council as we think about our upcoming meeting and anything else that's going on. Thank you. I would you rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I'm going to ask Councilman Cord Hall if he would lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Any adjustments to the agenda? I have none, Mr. Mayor. We have a public hearing, one public hearing tonight, uh, consolidated annual performance and evaluation report hereby known as CAPER, the town of Christiansburg as a recipient of community development block grant CDBG funding is required by the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, HUD to prepare the consolidated annual performance and evaluation report. The CAPER is an, is an evaluation of performance report detailed accomplishment, detailing account, accomplishments toward meeting the goals outlined in the 2010-2015 consolidated plan. <coughs> the CAPER compares the actual performance measures and with those measures listed in 2015 annual action plan. Mr. Nelson, is that you? Or who is that? <laughs> Mr. Warren. All right, where are you? <laughs> Thank you. Um, that summarizes uh, the, the prepared remarks that I had. It really is a comparison of uh, what it was done in 2015 uh, uh, with, uh, with actual performance, uh, the, what the, the action plan laid out with, with actual performance measures. Uh, we are wrapping up our citizen, citizen comment period. Uh, we have not received any comments yet. It, the, uh, the plan has been available online uh, on our website as well as at the library. And um, we will be concluding that uh, month long comment period at the end of the week. And uh, uh, if this is to be approved uh, by council, we will get that, uh, uh, those results to, uh, to HUD and uh, then close out uh, the 2015 uh, cycle for our funding. So, uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well, without going too deep, we're going to pass. We have school board people here, so we, it's cool, we need to make sure it's, we're going to pass this thing. Any other questions, comments? Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is the consent agenda, which consists of the meeting. Uh, Meeting minutes of November 22nd, 2016. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion, questions, or comments? I'll need to abstain as I was in Richmond <clears throat> on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. Okay. Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Abstain. <coughs> Councilman Hopper? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. <coughs> I vote in one. Um, the next section is citizens' comments. It's when we open the floor to general public that may want to come forward and discuss uh, any questions, problems, comments they may have or would like to make about the town. Uh, if you are going to participate, I ask that you come to the podium, you give us your name and address, and keep your comments uh, to five minutes. Is there anyone here to address council tonight? Seeing none, we'll close the uh, citizens' comment. Under introductions and presentations, uh, Ms. Powell, I believe you're going to present this. Uh, this is recognition of Blacksburg Breakfast Lions Club for the support of the second grade uh, Greater Swim Lessons Program at Christiansburg Aquatic Center. 
several organizations and individuals in our area uh, who are giving back to the community and to achieve notable accomplishments and they don't always get the proper recognition so we've decided to add a portion um, once a month on the agenda to recognize these groups and individuals um, and we've also added a form just so everyone in the community is aware as well on the right side of our homepage where you a citizen can go in and um, recommend someone for recommend recognition mm -hmm. Tonight, our first group is part of a program that all of you guys are actually aware of, and that's the second grade swim lessons at the Christiansburg Aquatic Center. Um, those lessons were available to all Montgomery County Public School second graders, and they're made possible by the Blacksburg Breakfast Lions Club. So I just have a really quick presentation to give you guys a few more details. Would you like me to? Sure, thank you. So um, a quick program overview. Um, more than 1,400 second graders have received swim lessons because of this program. In 2015, there were 660, and this last year, which just concluded in October, there were more than 750. Um, the Lions Club is contributing additional money in 2017 to allow the Aquatic Center to give each second grader four lessons instead of three. Uh, which they felt was really important because it helps incorporate the practical components of the safety lessons without taking away time from the actual swim lessons. And just some logistical notes, the program ran Monday through Thursday with one morning session and one afternoon session. And on average, um, in each of these 1.5 hour sessions, there were about 50 second graders at one time at the CAC. Um, and each student received a 30 minute safety lesson, a 30 minute swim lesson, and 30 minutes of free swim and skill practice time. And then we just have a few photos to show you how much they enjoyed <laughs> this program. Um, which not only is it fun, obviously, but it's really important because, um, you know, there could have been some students here who wouldn't have received swim lessons, and there's a big <coughs> safety component of this program as well. I think there's one more slide of photos. So, clearly they had a good time. <laughs> um, that's my really quick presentation. We have several me members of the Lions Club here, and I'd like to invite them up. Um, as well as I know we have several members of Montgomery County Public Schools representatives from um, the school system if they like this as well. Um, I don't know if you guys have a few quick things you want to say, but I'd love to have you a picture. Um, and we have a certificate to give the Lions Club because we're really appreciative of this program. And it's, it's a really, really great service for uh, not only residents of the town, but for the entire county. So thank you and come on up.
Hey, can we say something about this? Yeah. You're in charge. <laughs> no, I'm in charge. Uh, with the aquatic center here, there, at the retreat, uh, Mr. Showalter and I uh, made an effort to, uh, we heard what you folks had done with this, and you're awesome. That's awesome. With a place like we have here in the aquatic center, there shouldn't be any child in the county who can't swim. And we suggested at the retreat that uh, you challenge some other clubs and let other clubs try to match what y'all have done. And we appreciate you so very much. Mm -hmm. really. One comment I want to make um, from a safety standpoint, uh, number one, we appreciate um, there's a lot of community uh, service organizations that we have, and, and Lions Club is one of the first and foremost that's involved in the lives of a lot of the children and a lot of the children that are underserved in our communities, uh, you all pick up the burden. And uh, in response to, or specifically speaking with uh, swimming, there's been a statewide initiative for a couple of years now about mortality, and there's mortality studies that go across the state, and they look at children in this age group right here as being very susceptible because they're very mobile, and they get around, they do their own thing, they have their own lives, and they get involved sometimes in, in unfortunate situations. Um, and a couple of uh, situations come to my mind, and, and it's, uh, certainly with uh, in the, um, you know, the coastal areas with a lot more backyard pools and things that it's a, a much more dangerous. But the initiatives like this, once again, I think demonstrate that McGurman County is on the forefront. We're proactive. We're not trying to be reactive. And I just want to thank you all because we see the benefits also from a community standpoint of the, uh, again, the organizations that are giving their time, their effort, and their money uh, to allow these types of uh, what I call incredibly important initiatives. So, again, I thank you, and I thank the school board as well, because it takes all of this, it takes all these parties in the Aquatic Center working in conjunction to make this happen. I appreciate it. I thank you. And, again, this is one, one reason why Montgomery County is on the forefront. You know, I'd just like to say this, too. My grandson is in the second grade at Christopher Primary, and Colin could just, he was just ecstatic about the whole thing. He's, he'd been swimming before, but he just thought it was such a great deal, you know, that all the kids from, from his class got to go in there and go together and, and, and walk around. And I think even a more important point, uh, I just happened to be over there one day when they were having these sessions, and I just happened to be talking to one of the lifeguards, and she said to me, she said, you will be surprised how many of these kids have never been to a swimming pool before? And what an education, just going to a pool and getting involved that way was to them. And just, so it opens up a whole new door. And, and I know we, we think this way too, that hopefully some of the parents will, will see how an important thing it is for their kids and may bring them there during, you know, during holiday sessions and weekends. And, and I know it's Saturdays a lot now that the pool is very, very crowded. And uh, yeah, so it's just a, a great deal what what everybody has done, and everybody has worked together so well on this. And thank you. I think, I think everyone in this room reflecting <clears throat> as a time in their life when they almost drowned. It might be at the beach, it might have been undertow, it might have been in someone's pool or, or a creek. I know there's one in my mind that's very vivid uh, in, a, in a creek. But uh, you may never know the lives that you've been saved already with that, with those kind of numbers. Uh, you can rest assured there's probably been at least one life, and maybe more saved, just by someone learning, you know, what to do in a, in a water situation that they might not otherwise. So, uh, kudos to everybody involved, and and uh, you have to wonder whether your efforts have made an impact, because they probably saved at least one life already, possibly more. Uh, I'd just like to appreciate um, what you've done for the town. And uh, as Harry said, we discussed it during our retreat pretty heavily. Not only yeah. this, getting the, our youngsters and our students into the pool, getting them used to it, but there's some other programs that the Aquatic Center has out there, which our advisory board is, and Terry and her staff have gotten. And that's, and Brad mentioned, uh, you know, we all remember a time when we're drowning. Well, I would say there's maybe one or two people and i want to speak for you in this room who can't swim as an adult and the aquatic center has programs uh, so adults can come and learn how to swim there and i believe we've all been touched uh, somewhere in our lives uh, at least recently i know somebody i know uh, and was a great guy who didn't know how to swim and drown and it means a lot to the town of christiansburg that we're providing that service to our uh, citizens so thank you I think that this shows an excellent partnership between the, the civic clubs and the nonprofits. 
and the aquatic center and the school board. But what it also shows, there's no boundaries. I mean, this thing is open to all of Montgomery County. So your efforts reached out into Auburn. My grandson came over. Uh, some other places that, you know, Eastmont. You know, and, and the, the kicker to this thing is probably working out the transportation, I would, I would assume. But, uh, you know, you did a good job getting it together. And we, as a, as a governing body, appreciate what the Blacksburg Breakfast Lions Club has done uh, in addition to all that you do for the site and for those, those citizens also. So, again, let me just echo the, the thanks and the thoughts of all of my fellow council members to say to all of you, thank you for a job well done. Absolutely. All right. No other presentations tonight, Ms. Powell? Yeah, good. I mean, okay. Yeah, and, and you all are certainly welcome to stay for the meeting. <laughs> Strawberry. <laughs> Joe Straub got in front of the camera and that's all he cared about. I know. Thank you. Shelf it out pretty quick. Uh, Old business. Uh, item A is conveyance of 0.069 acre portion of Stone Street to Kroger Limited Partnership 1. The public hearing was held November 22nd, 2016. Make a motion that we approve the conveyance of the property of Stone Street to Kroger. Second. A motion and a second. Any comments or questions? Um, I just want to note that there is um, one or two changes that Kroger has requested to the deed, which is, shouldn't impact this. It, it just, we have to re fix our re reference to a plat because when this was prepared, there was only a preliminary plat available. Okay. So. Right. we be kind of glad to put this one to sleep. We've yeah. talked about this <laughs> for six months. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Councilman Bishop? Uh -huh. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Huppert? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. That was 6 0, thank you. Uh, next, we'll go figure. Next is the right of way variation, uh, vacation and easement relocation plot, plot from records for Kroger Limited Partnership 1, hereby vacating a 0 .069. Uh, acre portion of Stone Street and portions of public utility easements, one lot, 555 North Franklin to the land conveyance of the I'll likewise make a motion to approve the vacation, by the way, vacation, we'll be taking up the, uh, the extra plants here in a few minutes. I'll second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Hall. Aye. Councilman Huppert? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. There's 6 thank you. Uh, under new business, we have three appointments to the Aquatic Advisory Board. Uh, Terry, you want to introduce? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Council, I'd like to ask for the reappointment of three advisory board members. Uh, Jeremy Williams, you'll stand. Shirley Halleck and Karen Drake. They have been with the Aquatic Center, Center since the beginning, when we first developed the advisory board. Um, they're a wonderful asset to our advisory board. They um, guide me and help me with different things going on, give me advice when I ask for it, and so they're very beneficial for the Aquatic Advisory Board. Thank you. Just as a point, uh, um, the council did inquire about uh, attendance and mm -hmm. um, all the members proposed for reappointment have met our um, attendance requirements as specified in the bylaws. What is what is a, are those requirements? My understanding is fifty percent. Fifty percent or two percent? That's what I was told. We can address that down the road because I'm going to talk a little bit more about committees as we get deeper into it. Okay, uh, Mr. Mayor. I would like to, I'm since I'm the liaison for the uh, uh, Aquatic Center, and I have been for the what, almost the last year now, I took Mr. Van Hoosier's place there, and I have always been just uh, really impressed with how they run their <coughs> meetings and the excitement they have and the enthusiasm they have for uh, the Aquatic Center and for the kids to swim and 
thinking of new ideas to generate uh, more interest in the, in the aquatic center and I, it's just uh, been a real pleasure for me just to be able to just sit in there and, uh, and uh, uh, listen to you people and, and I, I appreciate the, the opportunity. I believe we're taking all three of these at once, correct? Yes, sir. As an appointment, or are we going to separate them out? We normally do them as, as a group, as we've done in the past. All right. Can we make a motion to do them one at a time? It's up to you. All right. I'll make a motion that we appoint each person individually. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> first up is Karen Blake. I make a motion to appoint Karen. I'll second on the Aquatic Center board. I'll second. <clears throat> motion to second, Madam Clerk. Councilman Bishop. Aye. Councilman Collins. Aye. Councilman Hall. Aye. Councilman Hubbard. Aye. Councilman Showalter. Aye. Councilman Stipes. Aye. That's six. Oh, thank you, uh, Jeremy Williams. Uh, just, I guess since I'm going to speak up, I have a couple of questions. We have a printout, and it seems that you have, Mr. Williams, you have missed quite a few meetings. Was there an emergency reason for this? Job-related, if anything. It's what? <coughs> would be job-related. Job-related. Okay, and you do serve as the chairman of that committee, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to reappoint Jeremy on the board so we can get it on the table. I second um, now it's on the table. I, I did take time and I went through the minutes and uh, I tried to do that with every person we reappoint. I'm glad you came tonight. Most of the time we don't get people and we have to bring it back on the meeting. Um, attendance is one of my big things, but I, as you know, Jeremy, we work at TAC and sometimes we can't get there. I know the meetings at four o'clock and I would hope that, you know, that the advisory board will try to work around your schedule in the future. You've been yeah, you've met the criteria as far as I remember of our attendance for the past couple of years, but I believe 14 and 15 was a little tough, from what I could see there. But the reason why I'm approving you on this board <clears throat> because I know you, we went to school together, and you're very vocal uh, and you're very supportive of the Aquatic Center. Um, and I just appreciate your service on there. And that if you would look just like when I miss a meeting or Court misses a meeting, and I know this guy right here missed a couple meetings the past couple of years is what I found out. But just if, if, if there's ever any trouble, because I think you're a valuable member on that advisory board, because you're one of those people who will speak up and say their mind, just if you could get with Terry, just so we make sure that we have you there, because it's important. And that's all three of you, Shirley and Karen. Karen and Shirley, we've all served on boards together. I think it's very important to have you there and have some pushback to us and some information that you do out there. That's the most important thing to me is the pushback that you guys give us about the Aquatic Center when we start to go down the road uh, on certain items or certain programs. So, and I appreciate that. So you have a motion and a second. Is that true? Is that right? Yes, sir. I got yes, a motion. Oh, we do. Okay, very good. Uh, any further discussion? Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop. Uh, Councilman Collins. Aye. Councilman Hall. Aye. Councilman Hubbard. Aye. Councilman Showalter. Aye. Councilman Stipes. Aye. Six O. And last, but certainly not least, is Shirley Halleck. <laughs> I'll move that we reappoint Shirley Halleck. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? Shirley. Invaluable member. She's one of my there favorite stories on the Aquatic Center Committee. Shirley and her husband, especially Shirley, are very vocal about our community, very passionate about anything that they believe in, and she has become a big uh, cheerleader for the Aquatic Center. She didn't start out that way, um, and probably like a lot of citizens in our town. Uh, they, but they, but she's, she's one of my favorite stories with the Aquatic Center in general, and we appreciate your enthusiasm, your passion, and your time that you spend uh, outside of the committee uh, promoting the Aquatic Center, because that's our goal now, is increasingly not to try to recoup costs, but rather to get more people using it. And we see the articles in the paper, that yeah. are routine, and yeah. keeps us up to speed as well. Mm -hmm. So right. we, we do appreciate that. And that's, I know it's a lot of extra effort and time. 
You're still submitting those, right? They quit. They quit <laughs> publishing. Them. They quit publishing them. Yeah. yeah. Accept them. Yeah. He says the things I explain <clears throat> as to what we're doing. We should be paying for advertising. <laughs> so that's why Marty's well, not here tonight. Huh? <laughs> that's why Scoop took the night off. All right. that, that's a good part of the reason why I bought the paper, was to uh, see what you said. Well, I'm, I'm to meet with the new editor in January. Uh, likewise, uh, uh, when I ran for town council the first time, she straightened me up pretty quickly. <laughs> I was against the aquatic center because of the cost, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know the real facts, and she taught me the real facts. <laughs> and I appreciate that very much, seriously. Shirley, why don't you tell them about how you got the timers for the uh, Virginia Tech meet? I went to Ignite mm -hmm. and had 14, enough to cover seven lanes. And my friend and I had eight lanes. Well, when I left tonight, they needed two more from the high school meeting, so. So you better get out up yeah, there. Yeah, you can head on out of here. Yeah. <laughs> We're taking a break until January. I think, uh, Shirley, I will say this, that it seems like every time I'm at the Aquatic Center for something, you're there. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate your, your time. And as, as Henry reiterated, it was just a little touchy there at first, I understand, I know, but it, I, I think uh, it's important, and you've done an important job with us. And, and helping with the swim meets and everything else. So I appreciate it. Uh, any other discussion? Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Huppert? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. Six oh, thank you, thank ladies you. and gentlemen. I, I, we you. appreciate your, the, what you do for us. Thank you. I'm to turn this thing over and close the meeting. <laughs> uh, North Franklin Street, Camber Street, Intersection Improvement Engineering Design Contract, uh, subject to VDOT review. So who's got that one? I'm happy to fill in. You got it? Um, yeah, if you will notice on your desk, you had an updated version. Um, the one that in your packet, I know the engineer depart engineering department is under a time crunch with VDOT to get this in. And I had not looked at it yet, so once I reviewed it, then there was some changes. And primarily the changes that are in there have to do with, um, we beefed up the compensation provision to really match what was submitted in the proposal. Um, we made sure that there was an indemnification insurance provisions that were added to the contract. Um, we made sure that we had, um, you know, debarment status, safety precautions, and, uh, some of the termination provisions in there and changes to the contract, which really are statutory, all that comes under the Virginia Public Procurement Act, and also all of the Public Procurement Act requirements for anti-discrimination, drug-free workplace, immigration reform and control act, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, that's why there's a difference. But the amount and uh, that the proposal was has not changed and will not change. And this has now been sent to VDOT, correct, or for their approval. So. Okay. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Council, um, I don't know if I just have brought this up. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm just a citizen. I came in and actually wanted to ask some questions. Your name, sir? Uh, my name is Brian Schoch. I live at 215 Rudabush Drive, Northwest, in Christopher, Virginia. Okay. Um, I'm here in attendance today to kind of get an understanding of what the proposal for the street plan actually is. When you go online, I can't actually determine if it's the alternate plan or if there's a primary plan in place. I'm going to defer to Wayne Nelson since he's the engineer. <laughs> okay, perfect. There, there has been studies done, sir, and proposals have been made in regards to the new configuration. But the engineer that we've selected is scheduled to have public meetings and we're going to present options and ideas to the public for comment and uh, we're going to select the best alternative. Okay, because that was kind of my question when reviewing these uh, plans. If I was kind of thinking I'm not an engineer, I don't necessarily know how to evaluate these plans. Um, are you who I should direct the questions to in the future as this kind of develops? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And I can give you my card. 
Okay, I'd appreciate that. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you appreciate you coming out. Yeah, no uh, uh, Wayne, is it going to be better than it is now? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> 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 you got saying, can't it up? That's <laughs> exactly right. I, I appreciate that. Um, all right. Any further questions about the contract? <clears throat> Do I have a motion? To approve? This, this contract has been submitted, correct? Yeah, it was submitted to, yeah. to VDOT? For yeah, review. it's for, for VDOT review at this point, correct? Is that yes. the present posture? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so approval would be subject to any, you know, changes that VDOT requires. They're not going to mess with the money, you know, I mean that, right? right? Is that, that's that's my understanding. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It would just be little technical things that they would need in the contract for whatever reason. Uh, should we are we looking to approve this then or are we waiting to get response back from VDOT that it's a document in which without if we approve it now we might be looking to approve it again if they make the revision mm -hmm. correct no you can approve it subject to in, in sub, uh, approve it uh, subject, subject to, to any their, revisions that they their made. revisions yeah because it's nothing going to be material that would affect that's not substantive okay yeah well I have no problem I'll, I would move that we approve the um, the uh, engineering design contract as presented uh, with the changes and she made. Yeah, as presented, yeah, okay, the, 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 with, with the amendments, yes. Okay, I second. Motion to the second. Any further discussion? Any discussion? I just want to see that done so bad. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. chomping you and about the twenty-two thousand. Yeah, about, you and about 22,000 others. Right. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, if there are no further comments or questions, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Uh -huh. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Huppert? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. There's six other, thank you. Uh, water sewer rate study contract approval? Mr. Biggs, that you? Yeah, I can give a quick report, and if you have any more detailed questions, then uh, she Nelson and myself would um, work to respond to that. Uh, we did go through a procurement process um, consistent with our fiscal year budget to solicit proposals on um, performing a water sewer rate study. Um, we have uh, a proposal from uh, Draper Aiden Associates uh, in the amount of $33,700. Uh, we do feel like this study is a prudent thing to do at this time. We do have a, a, a fairly complex uh, rate structure associated with our, with our utilities, and we have some variables that are changing at this time related to uh, um, potential changes in wholesale costs and also potential changes in our debt structure. And I think it's a, it's a very worthwhile thing for us to do to get an independent third party to look at our structure and, and make sure that we have the uh, uh, correct amount of cost recovery and, and that we are going to be in compliance with our uh, financial policies regarding reserves and, uh, and uh, days payables and so forth. Okay. So you have, is that correct in here? It's probably in the... Page 135, I believe. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I only probably threw 130, but we got <laughs> <laughs> Ran out of paper. Yeah, I ran out of paper in the copy. Mm -hmm. So we would seek your approval of the contract in the amount of uh, 33700 in award to Draper Aid. I would move that we approve the contract as presented. Second. Motion and second. Discussion? Uh, just a couple of quick questions. Uh, Mr. Biggs, if you could, uh, if, if council, if it's their pleasure to vote on this and approve this contract tonight, um, and then with submission and all, wh what time frame are we looking to have a, a return product where we can be able to utilize this? The schedule is that she will, uh, I think, Beginning of February. Oh, correct. She had accelerated schedule mm -hmm. and a non-accelerated schedule, if you would. So 60 to 75 days, give or take? Based on our ability to provide her the required information she needs. And that would give us a chance to be able to utilize that information during the... Uh, yes. Yes. It's our intent to incorporate what we have in the way of study results into the proposed fiscal year budget. Right, right. And that would be right. That'd be high time for that. 
Yes, I've had some questions in the past about the need for this because yeah. of the way that we, as a council, establish or make decisions on a year-to-year -year basis about raising rates and so forth. But one very simple question to summarize it all. Mr. Biggs, do you feel like this is a good idea? I think it's a very important um, project and a good idea. And yes, I sir. trust that, and I'll, I'll support it. Okay, so we do we have a motion in the second. We do. Uh, any other comments or questions? Gentlemen? Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hopper? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stites? Aye. 6 0. Thank you very much. Uh, straight committee. Um, Read them out for you? Well, no. I was thinking, I guess there's no way we can lump the first four together, can we? Because they're all basic subdivisions. Or I'm just trying to think of it. If we need to go through one by one, we certainly will. One by one, I'm not hearing any support. I mean, if you, you feel like you can lump them all together, if you can do I think that we can lump the first four together for that sure. That would be fine with me. Yeah. I support that. You can pass those out. And I'll just go through them all, all four, uh, yeah. quickly, and then we can act on them. Got a lot of extra work on the front end, Andrew. That's fine. Are you already got okay. If I may clarify, the, uh, I believe the fifth, which was the, the, the Kroger. Yeah, no, the fifth was uh, signage. Street, street signage. Sure. Sure. Oh, okay. Good. I'm sorry. Yeah. Kroger thought he did. First so time six months I hadn't been in here for yet. I do want to maybe give us more summary while you pay national stuff. Yeah, I This is the Hagen Thompson. Okay. Okay, we'll go ahead and start while Andrew is passing out. This is item number three. This is um, identified as the lot three and four of Hagen Thompson subdivision tax map uh, 527A179. And from the uh, second sheet of this, sheet two of two, you can see uh, the parcel is actually part of lot A and lot B today are one parcel. And it's a very tidy subdivision. The existing house you see on the left <clears throat> is there, and they're going to move a shed that's in the in the back. You can see the frame shed is is going to be relocated, and lot B is being created uh, to make two very similar sized lots right here. One's going to front on Craig Street, and the other will front on Hagen as it does today. Right, right now, they're both uh, the axis is off of Hagen. So that's the first parcel right here. A very simple subdivision. Are you saying that right now there's one lot right. and making it into two lots? Right. We're going to do a building lot there okay. along Craig Street. Have right. we seen this street. before? Mm, no. You see similar subdivisions in this area? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Over the last two years. Okay, the second one you have now. is item number four, and this is um, on Economy Street, and this basically is uh, applicant, I believe, is Mr. Duncan, Greg Duncan, who's going to be uh, creating, there's, there are two lots here right now, actually there are, there's, yeah, there there are several lots right here. They're being tidied up into three lots, lot A, B, and C. Um, the existing lot line that you see, if you see them on lot B is a frame garage right now. Do you see that? There's a lot line running right through that. It's very odd shaped. So Mr. Duncan is tidying up this to create three lots uh, out of probably five or six. There's some paper parcels down there under lot C. So there would be nice three orderly, uh, logical lots created out of probably six or seven um, willy-nilly plot or willy-nilly 
uh, properties right here and uh, you can expect to see some development on lot B. So uh, that's the second, that's uh, item number four. Let me stop one more. Yes. Minute. All right, so right now, right now there is just, again, just one lot. No, no there's, no, a, bunch there's a bunch of lots. There's a bunch of lots. There's a bunch of, I believe we talked about A, B, and C. <clears> just to give you an example of how okay. willy-nilly it is, if you see the frame garage on lot B, Steve, uh -huh. okay. see mm -hmm. there's a property mm -hmm. line running right through it, it's on a skew. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. It doesn't very logical. Mm -hmm. And so that lot line is going to be abandoned. Okay, I got you. That's the existing lot line. Okay, so I'm making three nice, Greg's yeah, making three nice side. lots okay. out of five or six that are not very logical. Okay. Okay, so that's item number four. Uh, the next one, I'll take it. That is uh, lot number one. Yes, that's not Christian's birthday. That's this item number one. This is off of Stafford Drive on Lynn Drive, and what you see on this one is a, uh, there are presently, four lots here, and they're being reconfigured. Um, the, the parcel that you see with 1.232 acres uh, has a house and the, right now, the 12 acres surrounding that is part of that house, and they're subdividing the property between family members um, to reduce the size of the 1.232 acre parcel from the parent parcel, and two family members are splitting up. The 4.1 acres is going to um, lot number 75 on Lynn Drive, and 8.182 acres is going to lot 70. So, hey, can I ask a question on that one? Yes. Mr. Stipes? The 4.11, well, the 4.1 yeah. acre plot um, the directly uh, adjacent to the 1.232 acre mm -hmm. plot, mm -hmm. does that have any road frontage at all? Um, well, it does along Lynn Drive because that lot is being abandoned. It's a very odd shaped lot. Um, if you can see it right here, Cord, yeah. you can see this is being it's a little abandoned. diagonal right there. It's yeah, this, is the, this is the lot now, yeah. So it does have. Road frontage, but it's along Lynn Drive. So, so it's actually taking where it says the 0.53 acre, the tax map 404-1-3C. That's going to be part of the 4.110. That's correct. That's, okay, that's, that's I guess that's one of the family members. You okay. would probably know the name. It doesn't matter. It's, right. it's one of the family members that's getting a portion of the. This is the mother's land right here, 1.232. Okay. And I'm splitting it between two children. Uh, mom's mm -hmm. keeping the 1.32, and right. the kids getting 4.1, and right. the other kids getting 8.1. Right. That's correct. So there, I said there was four lots. There are presently three, and there's going to continue to be three that are configured differently to, to split up the uh, 12 acres. And, and, and Mr. Stipes, I don't mean to be dead horse. I just want to make sure I'm correct. Yeah. Again, that, that line, because I'm looking at the vicinity map, mm -hmm. and it, it just doesn't look like that's over there. It looks like it goes straight down to that corner with that acute angle, which doesn't give it any, any road frontage. But you're, you're telling me that where that, uh, that 0.53 acre, that is part of the 4.11? Andrew, do you understand what he's saying? So the lot line saying, would be vacated. Yeah, yeah what there. I'm saying is right here on the vicinity map, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't so show the little be. thing come out here, which is what they're saying here. But is this actually going to be part of so it? it? It is part of it. Okay, so right. okay, that's, that's a cul de sac. Correct. Yeah, so that, that should be, would be like that right there. Then, yeah, it comes yeah out we can like have there. them. No, that's I, I, that's what was confusing me. Yeah, yeah but the vacant lot, the lot line would be vacated and then it would be part of the 4.1. That makes perfect sense. Thank you. Okay, so that's item number one. Item number two is Christiansburg Industrial Park. And this is the last, last one. one. This will be the last of the four. Well, this is very simple as well. Yeah, more like the first one. Right here. Okay, this is in the industrial park. You're probably familiar. This is a collision. The uh, parcel two an existing industrial building is collision plus building right now and uh, the uh, parcel one and parcel two now are one parcel and it's being split to create two parcels and uh, <coughs> plus will basically front on Houchins Road which is on the <coughs> top of the sheet the east side of the sheet uh, but they will continue to have access on industrial drive at the bottom as you can see with an easement and then parcel one is going to be a new parcel, uh, a new industrial parcel. So the parent parcel was roughly 10 acres. 
and their uh, request is to preserve the 3.312 as parcel two, and then uh, I guess parcel one. You said that this has been a site plan submitted for parcel one? Correct. Right. For a contractor storage yard? Yeah. So and they're going to take the whole whole parcel one? Yes. Or are they going to try to subdivide that? They're, they're looking sense. just to develop a portion of it, but it would be, mm -hmm. but they're, they're not looking at subdividing that parcel. So it would be, the site plan is for that entire They're going to use one. it all. Okay. The, the hope that parcel one will all be utilized for a... Yeah, it, it will be a contractor storage yard. Not exactly the type of industrial development. Right? <laughs> uh, 6.4 acres. That's a lot of storage yards. <laughs> That's a lot. The subdivision, um, the subdivision conforms with our ordinance, and uh, the street committee has reviewed all four of these and uh, recommends that the town council approve them as presented, and I'll make the recommendation <coughs> the motion. I second. A motion and a second to approve the first four items on the street committee report. Any comments, questions? Well, say I appreciate you going through those, Mr. Mm -hmm. Snipes and Mr. Mm -hmm. Collins, and you made it uh, much easier to understand. Thank you. Okay. Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Huppert? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Snipes? Aye. This 6 0, thank you. Those four uh, requests pass. Item five is just to bring, uh, make council aware that we have a citizen, her uh, name is uh, Miss Jill Colby, that came to a street committee meeting and uh, a previous sent, sent a request in for a study of a safety study for an existing intersection uh, in her neighborhood. Some of you may be familiar with it, this intersection of uh, Robin Road and Carson Drive. She actually lives on Cherry Lane. Uh, but we reviewed that in our street committee meeting, and the staff is looking into that, and we should have some recommendations next month on that. Mm -hmm. And that is it from the street committee. Well, what is she looking for? Well, um, without going, without getting into it, basically it's a sharp curve, and uh, for pedestrians it can be sort of un scary and unsafe to come around the corner. Uh -huh. um, it's not got cut through traffic. It's basically the neighborhood traffic. Yeah, I've been but we're looking at ways to maybe some ideas to maybe calm traffic down around that turn to make it maybe improve sight distance. And because uh, they already have stop signs there, right? So you're familiar? With, okay. Yeah. No, there's no stop signs there. It's just oh, a curve. Okay. It, yeah. It's an intersection that's turned into basically a curve because okay. <clears throat> all four legs didn't develop. So I just want to put, we just, speaking of me, just wanted to let you know that we're looking into that and we should have some recommendations next month. Okay. And that's it, Mr. Barber. Thank you. <clears throat> no other items? Uh, Mr. Collins, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Good. Thanks, though. Mm -hmm. So the number six other items is not out. Okay. No. We mm -hmm. move to staff reports. Mr. Biggs, town manager. I want to make council aware that we have, um, preliminarily scheduled for the requested interview of the Planning Commission applicants uh, to precede the Tuesday, January 10th council meeting. So those, um, uh, ap uh, those interviews would begin at 5.30. We would allocate about 15 minutes or so per interview. And and the date of that one more time, Mr. Bates? That's, for, that's uh, preceding our Tuesday, January the 10th regular meeting. First, Thank second you. Tuesday. How many interviews do we have? We have four interviews, and we have allocated time at the end of those interviews for council discussion. Okay. Um, second thing, um, wanted to inquire with you about whether to schedule the presentation of the business plan for the um, North Christiansburg Regional Park at that January 10th regular meeting or would it be your preference that that be at a special work session? I, I wasn't asked for, and I, I, this had come up about a week ago, and I know we, the uh, documents are still fresh, yes. and still kind of wet on, um, and look like a lot to yes. review. And a um, uh, couple things that came up at the most recent um, uh, Recreation Commission meeting, um, that's when it was basically not presented, but that's when it was submitted. Um, I, I personally would express the preference of us doing a work session. I think it makes more sense to do it that way. Um, and uh, and I guess uh, with if we did it on a work session, we would we schedule that prior to the January 10th date, 
Um, would that be, for instance, on the third or something along those lines? Or would we be looking to do that on the third? Totally your preference. Because the I, consultant has made themselves available. I, I was. Uh, I would be very interested in um, if we could look at doing that. Uh, maybe on a date. I think there's going to be a lot of information. From what I saw, it's going to be a lot. And it, it might be too much to do it on the tenth or something along those lines. If we can maybe yeah. do that on the third, if that works with everybody, or oh, or even that's right. You want to be back by then. Uh, I think it's important to have us all there as well. What about the second meeting we have in January? Could we do it come over five? Well, I, well, I was thinking maybe along the lines of the seventeenth. Seventeenth, which is the, yeah. the third Tuesday, yeah. right? Would, would you be available then? Yes, sir. I think we yeah. all need to be there for this. Yes, sir. I would. Yeah. I'm very interested. And the other question I would ask Mr. Biggs is if we're waiting until the seventeenth to do this, <clears> and again, I, and I think it's again we need to do that. We need to have all six of us and, and uh, Mayor Barber here. <coughs> um, would we be looking to do that as a joint with the Recreation Commission as well? I think that works very well. That would be the next request I was going to make, if it would be Council's pleasure to be able to do all that and have the Recreation Commission present uh, also. <coughs> and of course, uh, one member of our Recreation Commission, in fact, is, is, uh, will be a presenter that evening as well. Uh, if, the, if, if it's the Council's pleasure not to have the Recreation Commission present, I would at least ask that we need to invite um, Mr. Uh, Epperly uh, to be present during that at those meetings. So, in, in doing that, are we in, in, we're making them aware of the meeting for attendance purposes? Or are we going to advertise this as a joint meeting? I would I would ask for us to advertise as a joint meeting, but I, I, you know, I that's just me. I, I'm putting that out there for you all. Would we want to want to meet up at the uh, rec center? Would that be a better spot than? I think you have some crowd. We have some people. Do we have a room? Uh, oh yeah. We've yeah. had joint meetings before. And I think you have a bigger in the bigger area for the, like, to have yeah, it. It's hard to hold a joint meeting in this room. I it don't is. know if you've done it that is. in the past, but I would just it would seem like it would be. So what what time are we talking about? It has Mr. Neal uh, spoken at all about how long the presentation will be, him and, and Trevor? I, I'm anticipating a, a, a couple of hours for the work session. I think it's especially when you incorporate questions, answer and dialogue. That's right. Mm -hmm. So probably five thirty to eight. Yeah, probably on those lines. At five thirty okay. or six o'clock, whatever would work for you all. I'll, def I'll defer completely to you, Mr. All. You're our representative. If you think it should be a joint meeting, I'll go along with that. I, I am. Uh, I'm personally. I think, and I speak for a few of us. I think we're excited. Uh, this is the next big step. The Recreation Commission has been uh, involved um, uh, pretty much uh, through the uh, from the onset. And uh, I do. I'm not trying to kill two birds with one stone, but I also think they have some unique input from a citizen perspective as well to have them here. The last time we did a joint meeting was, I thought was very beneficial to me. Um, but uh, if we could schedule two to two and a half hours to do that, if the 17th would work with everybody and have the Recreation Commission invited mm -hmm. to be participants, that's what I would ask for, which would require us to do a joint meeting. I, you know, I don't know what their schedules and work conflicts may be, but if, if 530s can be tough for people who also have- Or, or six would be fine. Six to eight would be, and I, I don't mind the time. I will tell you that the last Recreation Commission, uh, I did bring this up and made everybody aware that I was going to talk with council about doing a joint meeting, and it seemed to be very um, appealing to everybody that was present. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, June 8th, June, I'm sorry, July the 7th, January 17th, 17th. 6 to 8. I had 6 to 8 there. I said, well, June 8th, that's a little late. <laughs> 6 to 8. Okay. Like July 8th would work perfect for you. <laughs> Let me ask this question. There has, I, maybe I'm out of the park here, but hasn't there been some talk about the county maybe helping us with financing this? The reason I'm bringing this up, maybe it would be nice to have a representative from the county there. I don't think we're there yet. We're not, not there that yet. far along. No, I mean, just and they could be in attendance as members. Well, awesome. oh, yeah. I mean, we can certainly make them aware of that presentation, okay. but uh, I, I was not intending to discuss finance options okay. tonight. Okay. But I just thought just to bring for them to realize what we're trying to do here. Well, I think they, I think they realize okay. what, what we're doing, but uh, but this is this is still preliminary stuff. I mean, yes, this sir. is a lot of uh, research to be, to be presented to us. The planning commission interviews will they be here or in the carpet room? Carpet room, problem. Carpet room. All right, so we're going to meet at six o'clock on the seventeenth at the rec center. Yes. And rec center furnishes. The sandwiches and the salt, <laughs> right? and the pizza, coke. <laughs> yeah. So you do it, Mr. Epperly. You don't know till you ask. <laughs> you don't know till you ask. Okay, yeah, we do. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for allowing that. Mm -hmm. What else, Mr. Biggs? No other reports. Madam Attorney. Nope, nothing. Except Happy Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Any other staff 
uh, reports for this evening. Very good. Uh, council reports. Um, Mr. Hepper, would you like to start us out? Well, I uh, hope everybody saw the flyer that I passed around. I'm not sure where the flyer is right now, but uh, concerning the, um, oh, thank you, okay. Uh, the new year said that the aquatic center is going to have, uh, I think it's from five, five to nine, and uh, looks like we got a lot of activities going there, and um, that's about all I have, Mr. Mayor. And one, one of the things I would say, too, is uh, I don't think I made a notice about the Christmas lights. That uh, have we, yeah, yes. they just such a good job this year, and I hope that be if you could make a notation of that in the next meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Show off. Uh, not much has occurred since uh, the Thanksgiving break, but uh, I just want to agree with Steve. We, Kelly and I went down for the tree lighting ceremony. ceremony. We saw a, a lot of you there and a lot of staff members, and I think it turned out really well considering the weather. But um, again, this is our second year that we've had this, uh, at least. Um, the scale yeah, event. This is the scale event, and uh, it's just, um, it, it, I really like it, and the people I talked to really like it. Even though there was cold weather, I think the attendance was very well. And um, you know, if you look at social media, I think that our citizens embrace it very well. And I think this was just one of the greatest things we've done around this holiday season, and bringing people downtown and <clears throat> building a community around, um, of course, this event. So, other than that, that's it. It's too bad Sarah's not here because she did a yeah. great job of getting all those vendors here and looked like a good many of them were there, you know. I'll pass that on to her. Thank you. Mr. Stipes? I have nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hall? Um, a couple quick things. At the last Recreation Commission meeting, we met uh, last, um, uh, not last Monday, but the Monday before last, um, and um, we discussed um, the youth activities and youth involvement. There's a tremendous amount of young people involved with basketball. We've got a couple members of the recreation um, uh, family, if you will, that are actually coaching. Chuck Muncy's coaching a number of teams yes, for the that. five year olds. And I just, again, I, it's, he's, and they've actually, they, there's been some, some, some changes of job um, titles there at the recreation um, uh, facility. And so Chuck's taking a more of an active role right now with some youth involvement. And uh, again, I'm sure he'll, he'll uh, do a wonderful job in that role, as he always has. Um, the um, I, I want to echo what Henry said. I don't think it can be stated enough. The, the lights, the parade, the downtown event, uh, which is what it's become. It's a downtown event destination for our uh, Christmas celebration. I couldn't attend this year because we had sick children, uh, and I heard about it from one of them who was unfortunately could not walk in their lead, and she was, I, I still am hearing about that. But it's a wonderful thing, and we hear a lot about that. Um, so it shows that we're, I think, we're starting to embrace what people are asking and kind of uh, almost salivating for what they need downtown, something, 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 and we're starting to do that. Um, one thing I would ask um, the um, street committee if, if they could look into going forward, um, along Independence, um, there's, uh, first off, I know there was a, maybe uh, an individual or two that may have been upset about the double line. Uh, there is a ton who have been tremendously supportive of and uh, especially around the blind, what I call the blind heel, yep. you come up around. It's a very, very dangerous section, and uh, especially with the high school students, a ton of them that whip through there and use yep. that to, to branch out. Uh, I'm very appreciative, um, and I know a number of people have talked to me about that. A um, member of law enforcement who's not a member of the Christmas PD has actually come up and spoken about how important it is, and a member of the uh, state troopers have, have told me that as well, how important it is. But one thing I'm seeing along that stretch is a lot of, uh, it's not the parking, we allow the parking along the lines, but there's a lot of trucks that are now parking on the side of the road, uh, whether it's moving, or moving vans or uh, industrial vehicles. It takes up the entire lane. And so now, and ironically, the last couple I've seen have been on that hill where they actually have to go completely over to the left of the double yellow line to go back right. And, um, and this is actually some of these concerns have been brought up some, from some members of law enforcement to me. It's something we need to look at. Um, and uh, cause I think it's an incredible hazard when you have to literally go completely over to the other lane. So that's something I'm seeing more and more of on, um, ironically, on that section. The driveways I know aren't very big, but regardless, uh, these large trucks, if they park on the road, it completely takes up that whole stretch. And uh, again, I understand if it's on a straight stretch where you can see, but on that hill, it's blind. And again, we've got kids that are, that are flying through there. Um, that's the only good thing that I, I just asked the street community, maybe we could look at that going forward. Um, and uh, that's uh, all that I have at this point. Well, Charlie, one, one thing I may want to do with that is just make an inquiry with the uh, 
police department under existing ordinances. If, if somebody's blocking the, the travel lane, I think that we can probably already, already handle that as an enforcement. When I speak, spoke to the member of the, the, the okay. Virginia State Police about yeah. that uh, whenever we were speaking, it was uh, if it requires you to go that far over, it's clearly in violation. Right. Uh, frankly, I probably should have called at that point, but I thought well, they're only going to be there for a moment or two. And about an hour or two later, I was come back still in the same spot. And again, it's on that hill, which means you get the blinds. I mean, it's it's a recipe for disaster. You can't tell if there are residents that are parking their commercial <coughs> vehicles there. Or no, they, no, these are actual like they. This would be movers. These would be um, large commercial trucks and things that are that are you know, providing a service. Mm -hmm. But there's just a better place. There's a, there's a other little road right beside that you could park in and walk over if you need to. But uh, it's very dangerous along Independence. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Yeah, I'd like to uh, thank the town staff for setting up for the Christmas parade, and especially who put up those barricades yes. for safety uh, reasons. I think it was a great idea, so I don't know whose idea it was, but thank them. Is the rec yeah. department mm -hmm. Okay. Four, about, what, about 480 of them? 468. <coughs> you don't have a lot. Okay. Of, there's a lot of utility outside the parade, I'm sure. <laughs> well, 68 of them are orange. 400 of them are green. That's all right. They work. It doesn't matter. It worked out. It, and I, I got a lot of compliments from attendees, how nice that was. And yeah. even some of the yeah. people that participated driving floats and trucks said it was really yes. nice to mm -hmm. have a nice wide lane to go, go down through there. So and yeah. hopefully, Mr. Biggs, you and I can sit down with uh, the committee and have a debriefing in the next couple of weeks yeah. while it's still fresh on our mind. Mr. Collins? Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to thank the Christiansburg Rescue Squad, the fire department, the police department uh, for the Christmas event that they had. And we got free food and they fed us. And I think we should have that once a month. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> yes. And I appreciate everybody who uh, walked or rode in the parade last Friday. Um, my grandkids, we've been talking about this for weeks, excited. And a Friday came and uh, we're out there and they said, we're getting in the truck. We're free. So, <laughs> yeah. Had to walk with Michael by myself. I, know. I, couldn't, I couldn't keep up with my wife. I don't know where she Everybody had a great Christmas, too. Thank you. Seriously. Um, I will finish up. the. Uh, I, I appreciate the comments <clears throat> on the parade. It's something that's become very near and dear to my wife, which when she's happy, I'm happy. Uh, but uh, I think Justin Shepard with Public Works told me that his men put in more time this year working on the parade than ever before and it shows it i mean the new lights or the the upgraded lights that we put in downtown it, it made a big difference the barriers certainly made a big difference uh i think sarah and and having the the farmer's market uh brought thousands more downtown and it was a good turnout i appreciate channel seven for being uh, being there and filming this thing um, I haven't yet seen what the Montgomery News Messenger with their photos, and I haven't seen anything for the Roanoke Times. <coughs> yeah, so I'm looking forward to your coverage on it too. Uh, the weather was not the greatest. Uh, we had all four bands canceled simply because you can't play an instrument when it's below freezing. Uh, the band had Christopher Grant said they were going to come and play until the spit froze in their instruments and then they were just going to march, but they decided at the last minute to pull out. The choir was the same way. That there was some concern about the effect on voices and, and this type. Of, they've got a big concert or something coming up. Uh, it was 70 degrees last year. It was 25 degrees this year, so we're still averaging 47 and a half degrees. So we're not bad. We're not bad. Uh, it, it, was a good, it was a good turnout. Uh, certainly not as good as Last year, when the weather was 70, but there was still a good crowd of people downtown. And I think, from what I understand, the vendors were, were happy with, uh, with what showed. We had six food trucks, and I think everybody had a good chance to make some money. Sarah told me, I think 40, <coughs> 47 out of 54 vendors actually came. So it was, it was pretty good pretty good turnout there. Uh, the... Uh, the town looks great. I mean, that Main Street section looks really good. Uh, I gave you all a, a small sheet, an excerpt from the uh, minutes of the Qantas Club from last week. Uh, we're getting really, 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 really close to getting this operating agreement done. 
and get that monkey off everybody's back. And uh, the club has not voted on it yet. I think that's the proposal we're going to make next week when the club meets again. Um, we is on meeting in the morning. We leave in. We'll be regular time. Seven fifteen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Henry, you coming over? What? Leah is on meeting in the morning. Uh, no. <coughs> okay. Very good. Uh, there, I've, had, I've had a couple of questions uh, from one of the, some of the council members, and, and I talked with Mr. Biggs about it today, and he has someone working on uh, a, a complete list of our committees and commissions and memberships and expiration dates. And Steve, I'm not jumping out too far ahead of everything. I think we talked today about want to kind of clean those the expirations up to where they will all end on the 31st of the, uh, December of the year of their term. That way we don't have to remember on May the 15th to appoint someone to planning commission or so on. So um, I think Tracy's working on that. And right. What we propose to do is once we have the, the full information resource that you can reference, that we'll bring forward some um, recommendations on process for uh, you know, solicitation of applications, review of applications, interviews, and appointment, so that we can do them in a batch, in a very structured way that's predictable, and you know, and really kind of simplifies the process because it does seem like just about you know every month we're we're dealing with one or another uh, board or commission appointment, and it's easy to make errors when we're doing it that way. So it would it would be our goal, and it would be a little complicated in the first couple of years because you know where we have terms that expire mid year now, we would be appointing people to terms that may be a year and a half rather than two years to get them, um, you know, on that, that that end of December or that calendar year time frame. But uh, I, I don't think it's so complicated. We can't handle it. I, I think, think we can you know, probably the end, we'll be glad look, we extend did. those current appointments to the end of the year, right. so they might be getting you know, two years and three months. Um, Right. Out of it, so I think that would work out. Um, yeah, can I say one thing, Mike, on that too, please, sir? Yes, sir. I think we need to also look at the a uh, fifty percent attendance rate. If that's what it is, that needs to be looked at hard. Okay. I was going to echo that, and that's right. something I meant to bring up. Is maybe we could add this as an agenda item to the first meeting in January, and just make the attendance policy part of our packet because I. I was, if it's 50%, then I, I think that we've made an error, uh, frankly, in our and, and I may have made an error in what I understood about that. And so I'll well, I'm sure. There's a document out there. Yeah, we, we did a policy about three years or four years ago. We did a policy and we studied it and we implemented a policy. I was thinking it was no more than three in a, in a calendar year and no more than two consecutive, I, something mm -hmm. along those lines. But if we could. Without, well, uh, it's going to be a. Right. Was right. that just for a planning commission? Planning commission. Exactly. It started yeah. with planning that's commission. What I, was, I know it's started with planning commission. And then and we, we expanded it right. because we yeah. sent it to. Um, we were supposed to send it to every committee member, advisory board right. member that we have, right. not just within yeah. the town, but anybody sitting anywhere. And, right. actually, and I know things come up. I mean, it's not it's not about pers per persecuting anybody. It's, things come up, and, and something unfortunate things come up. I, I get that. Um, can I mention one more thing, Mr. Barberfield, if you're finished? Are you finished? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am now, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Before you jump on that, Steve, yeah. if you could... All the, and I like saying Z Bell, he, he wants the complete data of a commissioner. Uh, you, you requested term, you requested pay, because there are some mm -hmm. committees that members are getting paid yeah. for that we've appointed. And um, I don't know whether we should treat those different with our attendance policy, um, but um, there's a reason why we came up with it. We, 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 do, we have a link where they can access the email to be able to email that, that representative directly, correct? Because like, for instance, in the Recreation Commission, that's actually in the, um, it's in our, um, oh goodness, the, the pamphlet that comes out, the brochure. It's that information's in there, um, but it, if it's right. available I online. Think, I think a document for council, yeah. especially when we have members from any, any, any commission come up for renewal, especially if you're going to make them on the 30th. I want to detail, yeah. I don't want to have to spend, you know, 40 minutes of my lunch having to go through minutes. Right. Um, I should be provided that. Understood. And, and I'm not going to speak for council, but I do feel like I should be provided that, and I should have been provided the one earlier today. Sorry, Court. Go on. I was just going to let everybody know that the John Limley Lane uh, Park is complete. Um, it's installed, been installed for a while now, and that they'll be doing the, um, if you will, the um, aesthetic enhancements 
uh, in the spring with the planting, shrubbery and trees and things of that like nature. Obviously, it's not a very good time right now to be putting stuff in the ground. You have to chip the ground away first. Um, but uh, as far as the, um, the, uh, the actual large scale uh, uh, plan, it's, it's been implemented and actually looks very, very nice. I was um, at a doctor's appointment the other day, and when I was checking in, a young lady turned around to me. She said, you know what I love? I said, not really, but she said, I love that park on John Lincoln. We live down there, and it's just, it's great for the kids. She says, you know, it's not all the way done, but there is, at least there's some playtime for them. So It's the prettiest piece of equipment we've got in Christmas right now. Very good. Very good. I have a co-worker, actually. She has a baby, but... Um, they're looking at next year. They're counting down the, the days and months to where they can walk up the street and go to it. That's been here all the time. All the little neighborhood parks get a lot of use. Mm -hmm. They really do, and this was a good addition. <clears throat> okay. Um, under other business, the discussion regarding the regular council meeting scheduled for December 27, 2016. There's some interest in canceling that meeting. Um, Mr. Biggs, I don't think there is anything that is so major and pressing that we could not delay it till the next meeting? I, I have been checking with the planning staff, at least there are no applications that would be held up as a result of that, and we, we don't have any other deadlines that we're aware of that are going to be impacted by that particular meeting. Does this require a motion? Yes, sir. I would make a motion that we um, uh, go ahead and eliminate the council meeting schedule for two days following Christmas on the 27th. Got a motion? Second. Motion and a second. Um, any discussion? I uh, just want to make sure we won't have any issues with bills because I know several times a year. <laughs> um, the bill list, normally you have the first three pages is the to be paid bills. We'll just submit that to you at the first meeting in January and those bills will be already paid. So they won't shut off the lights or turn off the water on us if we skip the meeting. Oh, we'll pay our bills on time. And I think it I mean, just kind of follows in because I believe we're following the state's recommended holidays, which is the Friday before and the Monday after. So what we're doing on that, I believe. So actually from Thursday afternoon on, there's really not any town staff to work on any bill lists or anything. We certainly wouldn't ask them to come back and do that. So I have a motion motion and a second. Just, just the department head will have them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the head dog. That's what they get. Any other comments, questions? <laughs> Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hubbard? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stites? Aye. This is 6 <clears throat> Next is consideration of scheduling a joint meeting with the Christiansburg Institute in January of 2017. I'll, sp I'll speak to that. <clears throat> uh, we've been trying for some time to get the two group, uh, this Christiansburg alumni, Christiansburg Institute alumni, and Christiansburg Institute together. And uh, for the first time that I can uh, think of, that is happening. And it's together with uh, Virginia Tech and Montgomery County. And uh, it's a big deal. Uh, and what we're proposing is the 31st of January, which is a Tuesday, as a as a joint meeting with uh, both its or both Christiansburg Institute organizations as well as Montgomery County and Virginia Tech. Any to, particular time you are proposing, Mr. Stops? Um, evening, obviously. It, the, it, the details will come about you know whether it'll be dinner and that or whether it'll just be a meeting or or just what. But before they're making any plans, they want. They feel that Grisberg County Council, uh, that solid representation is very important for whatever might come for that. Well, I'll just let you know that I, I would be available on the 31st to attend the meeting okay. that evening. And that's what they wanted is, a, yeah. Is, yeah. is before they make any solid plans, to make sure that a good, hopefully all of us, but most of us, most if not all, could attend. I think we were going to have a more than, what, four or five of us were going to be able to attend the one in a tech right. uh, about a month or so ago. The Councilman Show Walter and I have been interacting with them yep. and the meeting had several lunches with them uh, and leading them in this direction say you have to get her we think that getting the two groups together and having the common uh, some common goals will help everything yeah I, I think these uh, the other meeting was scheduled I think one of the nights that we had our uh, the same night the, the retreat, the retreat yep. so yeah that had been, been a long night yeah 
So I, I'm interpreting that we should advertise this as a special meeting that we'll have a forum yes. present. I, again, I know I can be there. Is at least three of us know we can. Right. Right. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Would, we, would we need to advertise that as a joint since uh, Montgomery County may be there or will be there? I know they'll have a rep. They have to advertise. And I think Chris, yeah, they'll, and, they'll be responsible for the right. advertisement. If they're there, it doesn't create additional advertisement for, for us. Yeah, I think probably what do we have to do that seven days? Three days prior to? I, I think what I'm getting at is there's probably at this point there is not a concrete time and or location. No. Right. So, right. Yeah. So I, mean, we, I know we'll firm up the details, but just in terms of putting it in the queue and being aware that this is when we need to not miss advertisement. Um, right. we'll and I don't, I don't want to put people in the spot, but I would like, I mean, if possible, I'd like to have a feel for who's interested in attending. I think it's all the okay. consensus. Okay. Right. Uh, that'll go a long way towards it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It'll be interesting meeting. Yeah. We have a closed meeting, Mr. Showalter. Do you have that verbiage there in front of you? Yeah, it's, I got the one on the agenda. It's close enough. I'll make a motion uh, for a closed meeting under 1 Virginia Code Section 2.23711A7 for consultation with legal counsel and briefings by staff members or consultants pertaining to actual or probable litigation or such uh, consultation or briefing in open meeting would adversely affect the negotiating or litigating posture of the public body and consultation with legal counsel employed or retained by, the, by a public body regarding specific legal, mat legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel. Uh, for the purpose of the subdivision, probable litigation means litigation that has been specifically threatened or on which the public body or its legal counsel has a response, responsible basis to believe will be commenced by or against a known party. Nothing in this subdivision shall be construed to permit the closure of a meeting merely because an attorney representing the public body is in attendance or is consulted on a matter. The closed meeting pertains to property located on Industrial Drive. I have a motion? Second. Motion and a second. Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Hmm. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hubbard? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. It is six so we're going to take about a about a three or four minute recess just to make sure you did not do I move to certify that the town council of the town of Christopher meeting closed meeting in the best of each member's knowledge discuss only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law and only such matters as are identified in the resolution to enter into closed meeting I guess second second Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop. Aye. Councilman Collins. Aye. Councilman Hopper. Aye. Councilman Hall. Aye. Councilman Showalter. Aye. Councilman Stipes. Aye. Six oh. Threw me off here for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we need a motion on. I would move that the um, the extension as was in our agenda packet be approved. Second. Any further discussion? Only that the extension was included in our agenda packet for any member of the public to have access to it. Okay. Madam Clark? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? No. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hoppert? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. 5-1. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anything else to come before council? Other than to tell Steve we enjoyed uh, seeing Alyssa come up for the parade. I hope she had a good weekend out of it. Mm. It's very nice. It's good to have you. <clears throat> yeah, like the cold weather? I got a... Uh, she was wrapped up. <laughs> I got a couple of questions. Real cool. quick. Since we're already getting the planning commission uh, uh, minutes in our packet, um, I'd like to get the rec commission uh, when they put those out for month and the aquatic centers. That would be good to be part of our package. And I was looking over the task list. Michelle, thanks for sending that out. It's always good to get that reminder. Yeah. I saw there was an item for gateway signs. 
And I, I saw it sort of like the resolution, Steve, where you have you and Mike to discuss it. I would like to incorporate council's input on that. I don't know about Mike and I discussing that. It was way back when. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's been assigned to a committee that you're working. Yeah. yeah. Melissa and I are working on that, but I haven't had one-on-one -on -one conversations about that. Right. It's, just, that it's just mentioned that you and the mayor were going to have a discussion on, you know, basically aesthetics of them. Well, that was dated 2015, so Steve was still down in Clayton at that time. <laughs> well, I yeah, but, just, but it's right. Something. I think yeah. it's good that we but need But that wasn't originally what was, I think, on the previous task list. So uh, that was new language, at least for Myers. So that's fine. Yeah, there's, there'll be a, a report yeah. before council before we do anything right. as far as that goes. A, a complete report. Melissa and I actually did a ride around this past week looking for locations. We're taking pictures of locations for proposed signs. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring a comprehensive proposal to you for all wayfinding, all gateway signage, and all site signage. So, so it's all consistent and done at one time. Site yeah. signage and talking about the possibilities of digital signage across the town? Yes, sir. And location placements for those? Correct. Hold on yours. Because I, I guess, honestly, you said about when were y'all going to be bringing that? Well, we'd hope to do it by the end of the year. We're, we're, we're not going to meet that, um, so we're shooting for the end of January. The reason I ask that is I take it that if that comprehensive plan is evaluated, there might be some budgets that we'll have to include items. Yes. Okay. Right. Very good. That's very good. Anything else? That's it. Uh, just want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Yeah, you I, will Christmas that, I will tell you that I ha I've had conversations with three ministers downtown after the Christmas parade. They all thank us for having a Christmas parade. Mm -hmm. And I think one or two of them brought it up in their church sermon on Sunday that they appreciated that we kept it as a Christmas parade. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a winter solstice? Yeah, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, <coughs> it was a freeze break, like Six <laughs> Mac Day or something. Like that. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Yes, sir.